Hi, I'm Melanie McQuaid and my coaching business is Melrad Coaching. Uh, I'm a professional triathlete and I've been a coach for 15 years, working mostly with endurance triathletes, runners and cyclists. And today what I'm going to show you is uh, a mini version of the mobility routine that I recommend athletes do probably at least once a week, if not in little bite-sized portions multiple times a week to maintain the function and health of their joints. So mobility in itself describes movement across the joint. And when we as athletes do classes like this, what we're trying to do is not only help your joints, which are things like your ankles, your knees, your hips, your wrists, work and feel great, but also all the muscles, tendons, and ligaments that are attached and help those, those joints to function also need some love every now and again. So when I talk about mobility, what I'm describing is more scheduled maintenance for your body. So today I came up with a mini TC 10K version that you can do at home with minimal equipment. And today I'm gonna use a foam roller like this. I'm gonna use a little ball, which is like a rubbery ball, like, you know, one of those super bouncy balls. Um, you want something like somewhat pliable, um, but you could substitute a golf ball if you were careful with how hard you pressed against it. Um, and a nice to have, but definitely not necessary, is a dowel or a broomstick. Um, we're only gonna use this for one little thing. Uh, you don't necessarily need it. Okay, so, um, and then probably a mat is gonna be nice to, uh, you know, pad the floor a little bit for yourself. Okay, so we're gonna start with some, uh, some foot things and so for us to start I think that you're gonna want to have no shoes on so let's pop our shoes off um, and to start with I'm gonna give you a little benchmark that we're going to use as we go through this routine and I can explain to you why we're doing this stuff okay so uh, our first benchmark is we're gonna do something called knee to the wall and so as runners what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to get your knee to the wall with your heel on the ground with your toes approximately nine to ten centimeters away from the wall that's a functional range of what's called dorsiflexion and so that's when you pull your toes up towards your knee that will allow you to land underneath your hips and so we're going to start with just 20 mobilizations this is a dynamic stretch of your, um, or your, of your calf and mobilization of your ankle just to get us started so that we can compare when we do this work how much, how much your ankle mobility improves from doing this work. Okay, so you're gonna send your, you're gonna have your hips square to the wall. You're gonna keep that front heel on the ground and both your toes, get, get push your pinky toe and your big toe into the ground. We're gonna send our knee over top of our foot for the first one, now we're gonna send it over towards our pinky toe, try to keep that heel on the ground, and then we're gonna send it over the big toe. And you're gonna keep cycling through that. So you're gonna go forward, you're gonna go over your pinky, you're gonna go over your big toe, and that's six. And then we're gonna go over the middle, then we're gonna go over the pinky, and then we're gonna go over the big toe, and that's nine. Middle, outside, big toe, that's 12. Middle, pinky, Big toe, that's 15. Middle, pinky, big toe, 18. Middle, pinky, big toe. So that's a bonus, 21. Okay, so we'll do the other side. Hip square towards the wall, heel into the ground. You're gonna probably aim for about 10 centimeters. And if you have to be closer in order to get your knee to the wall, that's just the reality of what your range of motion is through that ankle and you're just gonna work with it over time and see if you can improve. Okay, so that's three. So middle, pinky, big toe, that's six. Middle, pinky, big toe, nine. Middle, pinky, big toe, 12. Middle, pinky, Big toe, 15, middle, pinky, big toe, 18, middle, pinky, big toe, 21. Okay, 
So think about that. You probably already can feel that your, your ankles have warmed up. You already feel like that work has done something in your calves and potentially it was like kind of hard work, which is okay. Now we're gonna start to actually work from the ground up through our feet to improve how that ankle is moving. Okay, so you're gonna grab this ball and we're gonna take the ball and first we're just going to loosen up our feet, right? So we are going to just roll back and forth over that foot, back and forth. And now I want you to stop and imagine that my hand is the bottom of your foot. You have the, the part of your knuckles that your actual toe knuckles are. I want you to be right behind that, okay? So it'd be like being right in the, the meaty part of your palm, but not touching any, any of your finger knuckles or any of your bones. And you're gonna roll that ball right behind all the knuckles of your toes back and forth. And we're gonna do that 10 times, okay? This should feel good. Like if this is painful, then what I always suggest when you're doing classes like this, nothing should be a sensation that's greater than a six out of 10. So you never wanna, like if you have something like you have plantar fasciitis and that plantar, um, that um, fascia is really sore or you have like a really tight spot on your heel, you wanna stay away from those cranky spots and work around them because you're not doing any good by further irritating the tissue. Like make sure everything's somewhere between a four to a six out of 10 in terms of sensation. Okay, so now we're gonna take this ball and we're gonna go right where that knuckle actually is. So imagine this is my big toe, I'm going right where that knuckle is and I'm gonna push it up and I'm gonna push in and I'm gonna let my knee go out over my foot and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna roll the ball over to my second toe and I'm gonna push, let my knee go over that foot and then I'm gonna to go to the third, I'm gonna push, let my knee go over. We're just gonna pause it again. Like if any of these are really cranky, then obviously you don't wanna do this, but if it's feeling good, great. What you should be feeling is that like the bottom of your foot is starting to like relax and loosen up. You can actually probably, even though you're pushing now into your pinky toe and we're gonna release and we're gonna do our pinky toe again and make our way back. Um, you can probably feel doing this all the way up into your ankle and into your calf. And th that I think that's a really important realization when you're doing this work with your feet is that your feet are connected to your ankle, which are connected to your calves, which are connected to your knees and all the way up through your hips and into your back. And so if you haven't been doing work like addressing your feet, <clears throat> a lot of problems that are way up far away from the ground are 100% related to the fact you've, you've been neglecting your feet. Okay, so there, we've done that. Now we're just gonna do like a cursory little like um, rolling out the plantar fascia. And that's that, you know, the arch of your foot. You're gonna roll through that part just a little bit. And then we're gonna stop and we're gonna press just, just three times into our heel. And again, please remember when I was talking about your heel, um, that when I was talking about uh, this sensation, if you have any really tight, cranky spots in your heel, um, avoid them, nothing more than a six, um, but we'll just do three little sort of presses through the heel. And that's that foot. So let's move back over to the left foot and we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna start with just rolling around, seeing what's happening in there, letting things loosen up a little bit. This should, this should be enough. And like, I hope that after you've tried this class, you take one of these little balls to work and you're that person that like pops your shoes off and rolls your feet out at work because that's a good place to do it because nobody can see that you're actually doing mobility at work. Okay, and then we're gonna stop. And again, remember, we're not on the bones of your feet now, we're right behind them and we're gonna roll back and forth 10 times. And you can probably feel things like sort of crunching and moving around in there because this is a really good way to like cross friction, all of those muscles that go run this way in your foot and you're just going this way across them and it feels awesome. And then we're gonna stop again on our big toe. So now we're on the, the actual underside of that uh, knuckle and we're gonna press and let our foot, let our knee go over top of our foot and then come back and then roll over to the second toe underneath the knuckle and roll over that. And then the third and roll over that. 
and then the fourth and push your foot over that and then off to the pinky toe moving over that and then come back and then again on the pinky we're going to make our way back to our big toe now and then fourth toe and then third and then the second good and then your big toe Good. And then we're just going to roll that out a little bit, working our way towards the arch of your foot. And we're going to roll that out just for 20 or 30 seconds. And then we're going to move to our heel here. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to do three um, presses. So you press into your heel, let your knee come forward. Again, avoid any cranky spots, anything that's sore. Um, so, and, and probably find three different spots. You can find where your Achilles attaches down there can be like a tender spot. So don't be, uh, be kind to your feet. Um, anytime you feel any pain, things get tight. They don't actually loosen up. Okay. And so that's our feet. So we've just, remember, all we've done is like a little bit of mobilization against the wall and then we just rolled out our feet. Now we're gonna go back to that wall mo mobilization. Um, but before I do, like even standing on your feet, what I imagine that you're feeling right now is that you feel like you're actually like sinking a little lower into the floor, that you have just a little bit more sort of engagement that you can probably feel like your feet are a little bit fatter, wider and flatter um, from doing that work, which is a good thing. Okay, so then we're gonna go back to this wall mobilization. And again, aim for about 10 centimeters away from the wall. Keep your hips, uh, like, like your hip bones, like two head, headlights that point straight against the wall. And we're gonna send our knee over our foot and over the pinky and over the inside. And just like reflect on whether doing that footwork has given you a little bit more range of motion. If this, is, if your ankle's moving a little bit freer, um, ideally like a little bit of both. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah. And, and hopefully this is like making you feel, um, just a little bit more, um, just strong and connected to the ground. Okay. So we'll do both sides. We'll go to the side about 10 centimeters again from the wall, squaring up your hips, knee over toes inside outside one two six so knee over your foot knee to the big toe knee to the pinky i guess last time i did it the other way so let's go middle pinky big toe middle pinky big toe middle Big toe. And I just lost count, so let's just assume these are the last three. <laughs> Good. Okay. All right. So that's um, working on your your uh, your calves from working on your feet. I'm going to show you another way in which your connection to the ground can be improved by working a little bit from above your ankle area. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this ball. And I'm going to put my big toe and I'm going to prop it up on the ball. So my big toe is up in the air. My little toes are down on the ground. Okay. And then I'm going to get into a nice stance where I stand a little bit more than hip distance apart. I'm going to imagine pulling my heels away from one another. Um, and that will help me to like get into a nice neutral pelvis. And when I do this, I'm going to take this dowel. And again, you don't need the dowel. You can just pretend like you're holding a dowel. But again, I'm going to stand up straight, like with nice, tall posture to like open up my, my thoracic spine, which is all this mid and upper back area. I'm going to tuck my front ribs under, and then I'm just going to do some like twisting here where I keep twisting around this leg. And we're just going to do this for 45 seconds. And again, this one is an excellent um, sort of full... I, I, I think this is more like a fascial chain opener where all your proprioception right from the ground up 
um, gets woken up from this exercise. And it'll be interesting to see what you feel in terms of your stability on the ground after you kind of opened up your hips like this. So we're gonna do 45 seconds here, 15 more seconds. Again, it's just like unhurried, pretty relaxed, no big deal. Not hard work. Good. Okay, so then we're gonna take our big toe, our right foot off of the ball. And maybe just like like already after you've done that, you can probably feel the difference between your right and left foot. So you might want to pause and reflect, like, wow, that did make a difference in terms of how that foot feels. And then let's go to the left, and we're gonna again prop our big toe up on the ball, keep our little toes on the ground. And so in that way, we're still trying to keep this tripod. And when I, when I talk about a tripod, it's like you have your big toe, you have your little toe, and you have your heel onto the ground. And then we're gonna do another 45 seconds on this left side. You just wanna keep your, your head facing forward and you just want to be twisting almost like your body's on a rotisserie and you're just twisting. You're not straining. You're just kind of going within a comfortable range of motion or keeping both of your feet firmly planted in the ground so that you're rotating around that solid platform. Just 10 more seconds. Good. Okay. So you can put that down. You can actually put your little ball to the side. And if you're standing there, like I, it would be, this is a good time to really think about like, is there a big difference between my, my standing stability now versus when I started the class, before I started doing some calf work, before I did any um, footwork. And my guess is there's quite a bit more um, and that you um, are feeling quite loose and relaxed because your feet are, are quite comfortable. Okay, so um, so when you're in this mode, like you've actually opened up your feet, you've like mobilized your ankles, now is a good time to start doing stuff like calf work. And calf stability is really important for ankle function. Um, and the reason I focus a lot of attention on your ankles is it doesn't really matter how strong your legs and your hips and your glutes and all this stuff is because the point of all these muscles is to drive force into the ground and the ankles are the gateway and, and your feet are what control the direction that that force goes in. So if you're neglecting basically the, your feet and your ankles that are what, what are pushing that force that these big muscles are creating in the correct direction, then you're probably leaking a lot of this force and energy because you know it's not being directed correctly. So it's really important that you manage your force control and what is making the most difference in terms of that direction. So when we do calf work, it's important that you do it correctly because it's really easy to like practice doing calf raises and, and do them wrong and actually like exacerbate problems that you're like and movement patterns that you've been doing forever and then your calf raises aren't really making any difference. So when you do calf raises, you want to be really sure and I would say have something like a wall to balance on because in, until you actually have nailed like doing a proper calf raise you don't want to add the stability component of having to balance as well so you want to get into that tripod that i was describing where you have your little toe your big toe and your heels on the ground and we're going to do just 15 with straight knees and you what you want to do is push your little toe and your big toe into the ground and you want to come straight up okay and then when you come up, you want to come up as high as you can and just have a little mini pause at the top before you come back down. Things to watch for that you, you might be doing wrong that I see most of the time is that you're coming up and you're rolling out. Okay, so you think you're coming up, but you're actually not coming straight up. You're rolling right off your big toe to the outside or you're dropping right in and you're kind of like this. You want to have that big toe and your little toe driving into the ground with equal force and coming straight up as high as you can and then come back down. So let's do 15 of those. Three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, 10, five more. If this is hard for you, 10 might be enough. So just, again, make this a four to a six out of 10 in terms of like challenge for you today, because you can always build this stuff up over time if this is too hard. And last one, good. Okay, so you're the next round of calf raises we're gonna do, we're gonna do the same, where we're really focused on coming up equally, coming straight up on that ankle, but we're gonna keep our knees bent the whole time. Okay, so knees are bent, we're gonna push our big toe into the ground, add our pinky toe, we're gonna come straight up, and down. Two, three, four, Seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five. Good. Okay, and then the last round of calf raises we're going to do. We're gonna do with our heels together. So you're gonna have your feet cut. This is what I call the ballerina calf raise. Feet are turned out. You have to fight really hard to keep both your big toe and your pinky toe down with this one. Your heels might come apart, that's okay. So you're gonna come straight up and down. Two. Knees are straight. Three. Four. Five. Okay, well hopefully that wasn't too hard. For, for a lot of people it can, if that haven't been doing calf work, your calves can get a little bit sensitive. So if it is really hard for you, do a few, do a little bit less. And then if you're sore the next day, definitely wait another day before you do them because you wanna make sure that you manage like the loading on your calves. But um, really, if you wanna run things like a half marathon, a 10K, a half or a marathon, you should be able to do about like three sets of 20 of that probably per day. So that should be something that you should be working on if it's too hard for you. Okay, so this is a relatively short class. Um, so I've just got a couple more things for you to do that will help you a little bit with um, managing some strength but flexibility at the same time. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is how to do a good morning because this is the number one um, hamstring strengthening and stretching exercise for those of you that might have trouble with your your pelvic alignment and your high hamstring area okay so when you want to do a good morning we're gonna start with our feet a little bit more than hip distance apart and I'm gonna go back to that tripod that I keep talking about where you push your big toe your, your pinky toe and your heels into the ground and you're gonna pull like imagine that you're stretching your mat and pull your heels apart you should feel your butt muscles engage, which also kind of brings your pelvis into a nice neutral position. Okay, so we're gonna have our shoulders down back, we're gonna tuck our front ribs in. And when you do a good morning, what you wanna do is, it's almost like there's a drawer behind you, okay? So you're in the kitchen and the drawer's open and it's annoying and you're gonna run into it. So you wanna actually close it. You're gonna close it with your butt, okay? So you're gonna basically send your butt, keeping your legs straight. And so your legs are straight, but your knees aren't like locked straight. They're like soft and straight. So you're gonna send your butt back and you're reaching your butt towards that drawer. Okay, so hopefully the drawer is shutting, but while you're doing this, you can probably feel that your hamstrings are engaging, right? So, so you wanna to go to where your hamstrings are about a four or six out of 10. I keep talking about that four to six out of 10 because that's enough, right? You're, you're activating, you can feel it, your hamstrings pulling on that tendon that attaches to your pelvis. Um, and if you go too far, what's gonna happen is probably your hamstrings are gonna say that's far enough. And instead of actually getting any lower with a nice straight spine, you're gonna start to roll forwards. 
and basically your pelvis is gonna roll because your hamstrings say, screw it, I'm not gonna go any further, okay? So when you do your good mornings, you just basically get nice and neutral and you send your butt back towards that drawer. Your, your gaze is gonna follow because you wanna keep your head in line with your spine and you just go to as far as you can, you can feel like, okay, for me today, this is far enough. I can feel my hamstrings at about a five, good enough. And then you come back up. So we're gonna do 10, okay? So three. And the good thing about this exercise is number one, hinging is super important for understanding and feeling how to drive with your hips. And number two, it's a super awesome hamstring stretch because sometimes you have to actually use your hamstrings to make them um, like more pliable. Um, and this one is great for getting not only the bottom of your hamstrings um, down towards your knees, but also that one spot that can be really problematic for some runners um, up towards their butt. So good mornings and plus, being able to hinge properly with a nice straight spine um, is really important for uh, movement through your hip joint. Um, and this kind of movement is important for not just being an athlete, but being a functional human. <laughs> if you can't hinge through your hips, um, you're probably headed to the orthopedic surgeon. So it's good to practice this regularly and be able to do this um, and not have it be a big deal. Okay, so I, whenever I yammer on like that, I lose track of how many we've done. So let's just assume that's eight and that's nine, and this is our last one. Okay, good. So that's a, called a good morning. And that's the, that is just an elementary hinging movement that you can transfer to a whole bunch of weighted movements to strengthen your hamstrings and also improve your ability to control your, your hips. Okay. So to, um, we're, we're, we're gonna do one last exercise that might, as a runner, seem like it's not really that important to your running, but it's actually super important. We're gonna do some stuff that, that is um, helpful in mobilizing your thoracic spine. Your thoracic spine is everything like kind of below your neck to um, you know, your lower ribs. And why is your thoracic spine important? Well, this part of your spine is really important for posture and uh, your posture in running is really important to what I was discussing before, which is direction of force. Um, if you have poor posture, again, all that force and, and power that you are creating with your, with your glutes and your, all your leg muscles um, can go in the wrong direction. So your thoracic spine is really important for stabilization and posture. Um, and if it's not doing its job, then what happens is very often your lower back has to take over. So if you tend to have lower back trouble, um, it, sometimes it has to do with your legs or anything below it, but very often it can be a, a locked up or um, dysfunctional thoracic spine. So I'm gonna show you a couple really great ways to mobilize that and to make your thoracic spine feel good. Okay, so the first one, we'll just do um, a, a, an exercise that is called the greatest stretch that um, not only gets your thoracic spine, but actually gets into your hips as well. Okay, so in this one, we're gonna start in our, oh, and I wanna show you something actually to make this a little bit easier. Okay, so you can, you don't need to have something to elevate your hands, but for some of you guys, um, especially if you're really tight through the front of your hips, if you raise your hands a little bit higher off the ground, it creates a little bit more room in the front of your hips to get your leg up. And you might find this exercise is a lot easier that way. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna come into a high plank. And it's okay if your high plank isn't perfect, if your butt's on the air, who cares? Like whatever, you're just gonna get into a high plank here, okay? And then you're gonna bring your left foot up beside your left hand. And as you can see, like having my hands up just allows my leg to come up a little further, a little easier. And then you're gonna bring your right hand, you're gonna put it on the ground. And you can lift your left arm and look up overhead. You can see I'm like, I'm rotating through my thoracic spine while I'm kind of getting into this left hip. And then I'm gonna put my hands back down, lift it up like this, reach that left foot back. I'm gonna bring my right foot up. Same thing, right arms reaching up overhead and then coming down. Okay, so we'll do five rounds of that. Left foot up. Reaching up, looking up, left arm down, 
right leg up, reaching up, looking up, and down. That's two rounds. Left foot up, looking up, and down. Right foot up, and back. And this is round four. And last round. Okay, so that last one, um, I really like that as um, part of any kind of mobility routine, but you can also use it before you go out running because it is a really powerful full body dynamic stretching exercise. So you might find that is like all of your like pre-run activation in one. Um, so I really encourage you to try that. So that's all I had for you guys tonight is just a, a few um, examples of some of the mobility exercises that we use in Melrad Mobility on Mondays. Um, and as I said before, like really paying attention to um, regular maintenance of your joints is not only key to like expressing your potential as an athlete. Um, and I can, I can honestly say that had I not done this kind of work starting in about 2019, um, I certainly wouldn't have been experiencing like improvements in my performance this late in my career. And it's like, it's, it's almost less important that I'm actually like performing well as an athlete and athletes that I, I coach are performing well as athletes. What's really important is that their bodies are functionally optimally for their age. And I think that if we want to all age well and be athletes for our lives, it's really important that these you know, super amazing, but like, you know, critical parts of our machine, which is our joints are properly maintained over time. So this kind of work is not just for athletes and their performance, it's for humans and their like longevity. So um, I really encourage you to look into some of this work and include it in your training. Um, and you can find me at melrad.com if there's anything I can do to help you get started. So thanks a lot for watching. <laughs>